Hi, Alex. And hi, Gwen. Hi. Um, hi. We can wait for one minute, maybe, for someone else to join us. And I okay. hope you all had a lovely day. And um, just a couple of minutes, maybe more. I have some troubles with the connection. Uh, well, I can hear you well. Okay, that's nice. I can hear you well right now too. It's okay. And Hello everyone. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, we can start with the presentation. I am Irene. I'm from Italy and I'm part of Movements for Freedom, which is a movement uh, started from a group of students from the University of Padua after meeting Supolca Italia, uh, which is uh, the Italian diaspora of Belarusian people. And um, we created various events, which, and this is one of them. Uh, so we want to do an interview every every week, every Wednesday at this time to hear the voices of the people from Belarus and their experiences. And especially because a lot of medias don't talk about this anymore. And um, we wanted to introduce first to Alex, which is uh the guy from some of our pictures and from our videos we took his pictures and uh, and then we found him so instead of just using his face we are just we are also listening to him and thank you for joining us and to um say and to tell your experience and um would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, yes. Uh, firstly, I want to uh, say that this is a funny story, uh, how we met e each other. And yes, uh, I can uh, start with my uh, introducing. Um, my name is Alexander Busin. Uh, I am 19 years old. And I was born in Minsk, the capital of Belarus. I'm a political repressed second year student of, of Belarusian State University of Physical Culture. And I began my political activity in, uh, back in 2019, in the first year of the university. Uh, then we had parliamentary elections and uh, you know, guys, uh, this event is always the same among uh, students. Uh, most of the students are forced to go and vote ahead of schedule. Students from the provinces, uh, pr provinces are fri frightened with a hostel. They say, if you don't vote for him, you won't get a hostel. And then I began to explain to my classmates that uh, the tricks of the administration should not carry them away. Uh, then I began to have the first conflicts uh, with the university's administration. And I was often told um, by them, don't get involved in, the, in politics. You alone will not change anything. You will have problems and nothing more. But when you get a higher education, then you will have the right to speak. Uh, this is about uh, the Belarusian system of education. Uh, I also took part in protest against uh, deeper integration with Russia in 2019. Oh yeah, this is about me. Okay, thank you for sharing. And um, I wanted to ask you also um how was the atmosphere and how did you feel before the election 
Um, each person's atmosphere was different. Some people could already smell victory and uh, some were already in isolators until the primary day of the election. And uh, I know the history of the Belarusian protests well. So even before the election day, I knew that there would be something unusual, something uh, that had not yet happened in Belarus. I knew that Lukashenko would beat the Belarusian people, but I like most self, um, I like most self-respecting Belarusians had no choice but to go out and defend our votes. So, yes. Well, thank you for your bravery. We admire you so much, and I would like to ask you to share with us your experience with the university protests and marches? Um, I wanted to start from the first day of the new course in my university when we with my classmates were told at the first class if you are seen at the protest it will be expulsion, expulsion from the university without any talk. Uh, they said our school is not in politics. Um, and in, at the same day uh, I went to a joint protest by students from all over, from all the universities in Minsk. Uh, this student manifestation caused a great resonance in the media. Even in, in the pro-government media, we were accused uh, of not uh, wanting to learn that we are triants. Uh, that, and this is, was the first step before Lukashenko gave the order to expel students for participating in protests. Uh, uh, then I found out that we had a new teacher in the university uh, who taught the discipline of tourism, but the information about his education was in public. Uh, he had five higher degrees of which one is KGB in USSR, two uh, FSB in Russia, and another is KGB in Belarus. And it is interesting that he was a teacher of management in tourism. And it was obvious when um, in each of our classes he talked with a group on political topics uh, and tried to convince young students not to participate in the ongoing protest. Uh, he always told me, uh, you are young, take time for your family and uh, don't wander the streets. And uh, some days later, so happened that on, uh, on the 5th of September, I was detained at the other student action uh, and I spent eight days in a deten detention center in a Crescent Street and in Jodina. And honestly, I spent this time better in terms of education than during the whole course at my university. Uh, so, I, so I can say that we have educated and smart political prisoners. <laughs> um, I have an um, interesting story from the first night in the isolator uh, when I slept and I had ordinary dreams. Everything was like at home. And um, in the morning, you wake up from the fact that someone knocks on the door and shouting, Tux, wake up and take your meal. Uh, even... Uh, um, a joke uh, appeared in Belarus, um, which is uh, sounds like if you have not been in prison, you are not a true Belarusian. It is funny, but this is a bit of a bit strange. But this is uh, real, f real life in Belarus. Yeah. Uh, the following week, when I was uh, released from the isolator, everyone students, uh, my classmates, the teachers, and of course the administration uh, was very interested in how it was, how it was in a prison. 
I was asked to talk about this experience and uh, of course everyone joked about uh, my stories from Isolator. I was called to the dean's office uh, where they conducted how they called it preventive but it was ideological conversation with me. Um, I was forced to sign documents saying that I would no longer participate in political meetings and wouldn't use unregistered uh, registered protest symbols. This is our national flag, uh, white, red, white flag, and um, our um, Belarusian symbol, Pagonia, Pagonia. Yes. And from that moment, I started uh, getting calls from the administration that if uh, I got into e-media or is later again, I would be instantly expelled and uh, I'll go to the army. This is a quote of the, uh, from the first vice rector. Um, I ignored their, uh, their threats and began to be even more active in protest activities at my university. I also joined the university's strike committee um, and almost every day we held var various protest actions, but uh, after threats from the administration, many people, many uh, people from our university got scared and gave up. This is fact, but it uh, doesn't uh, mean that the protest activities in our universities uh, was um, disappeared. Uh, the curator of my group often told me that she was threatened with dismissal because of my protest activity. And also I often had one-on-one -on -one conversations with the fi uh, first vice rector who tried to gain my trust and at the same time compiling reports on um, compiling reports to expel me and uh, also i want to share um, the story uh, that that is that is uh, the most memorable and my favorite protest action it was uh, in the 26th of october it was the day of the national strike so instead of going to classes, we met in the center of Minsk with students from other universities. Uh, I think, um, no, it was all Minsk universities uh, at this action, uh, all uh, pretenders from all universities in Minsk and uh, riot police, uh, which is called Amon in Belarus, uh, prevented us uh, from getting together for a long time and five times we were dis dispersed um, by them, by Amon. Um, and in the end, we were able to meet at the law faculty, uh, faculty of the Belarusian State University. Uh, but even the Amon couldn't explore this place because uh, we chased them away three times uh, from that place and um, at the same time when uh, when our protest action was um, a protest action of pensioners took place and which we joined later um, at the at this action at this manifestation with uh, pensioners we felt incredible emotions uh, because it was a meeting of completely different generations, uh, but we were united by one idea, one flag, and one goal. Yes. Wow, it's really amazing what you did, and we really admire you and appreciate your strength. And Thank you. I know that you are in Ukraine now, Therefore, yes. I want to ask you why and how did you leave Belarus? Uh, in the evening of the uh, same day that I uh, told now, 
in the evening of the 26th of October, caring people informed me that tomorrow I would be expelled. Um, the caring people even showed me some very interesting documents, uh, some report documents and other. And uh, the following two weeks were also very busy for me. Uh, so when I found out they wanted to expel me, the administration of the university wanted to expel me, I went on sick leave. Um, yes, you can get it even without having a temperature in Belarus. And since, since I'm a boy, if you are expelled from the university, you are automatically drafted into the army for a year and a half. Uh, but you should understand that the difference between serving in the West European and Belarusian army is like uh, heaven and hell. So this is um, the big difference. Uh, we don't have a professional army in Belarus. So this is um, like a waste of time. And I understood that if I now... at that time go into the army then i will stand in front of uh, my like-minded people and it is not a fact that uh, the government will not force me to beat them beat my people and then i got a call from the police department with an invitation to the police department because they uh, had opened a new case for participating in protest protest actions and uh, at that time, I ignored their call and moved to my friend for a bit of time. But um, the police began to put pressure on my parents. Uh, then uh, um, my friend and I began to understand that this could end badly and it would be better to leave the country to wait abroad for a while. For some of time and uh, after uh, the police depart the police uh, mm, um, the police uh, will end to call to my parents and to, to find me uh, I came back home again and uh, it was the right decision when I uh, leave the country because after a while I was already banned from leaving Belarus and until the 30th of December, the police and the military registration and enlistment office came to my parents' house and also to my grandmother's house three times a week since uh, the 30th of December. Uh, the police said that they knew that I was hiding from them and that I was still in Belarus and that it's just a matter of time before they find me. Mm, but I was no longer in Belarus. Um, and on the night of the 11th of November, I took out my SIM card from my phone and uh, board, boarded the Minsk Kiev bus. I practically, I practically had no money, a minimum of thing with me. I said goodbye to uh, my parents, to my close friends, and uh, go out. All the way to the border, I was worried that I would not be released from Belarus and detained. But fortunately, everything was relatively fine. And when I crossed, when I crossed the Belarusian-Ukrainian border, I felt calm. Uh, I felt uh, comfortable. Mm. It's absurd yeah. how this this kind of experiences, the situation are happening so close to us. And um, I want to just send you a lot of um, positive and I hope we can hold help in some way and give you vo voice at least. And um, so how has been your experience in Ukraine? Um, here in Ukraine, I feel comfortable. 
because there are many Belarusian guys with whom um, were on the same wave. Uh, we all became very big. We are. We all became very good friends. We support each other. Uh, we hang out together. And uh, for the first months, Belarusians whom we don't even know helped other guys like me and me a lot. Belarusians from all over, from all over the world bought us food. Of course, they saved us money to live. And I can say that 2020 is truly the year of Belarusian solidarity. As at the moment, um, I continue to study in Poland on a scholarship program of Kalinowski. This program is only for Belarusian people who, for political reasons, don't have the opportunity to uh, study in Belarus. This uh, program provides quality and free education and, of course, provides a stipend which is much more uh, higher than in Belarus. So, um, yeah, I feel comfortable here, here in Ukraine. This is a really familiar country for us. This is, yeah. Solidarity is an amazing thing. And it's amazing to hear also those stories among other and, um, I'm happy you you are experienced also this part and this solidarity aspect. And um, I wanted to ask you also, what do you miss about uh, about Belarus? Um, probably like everyone else, I miss my close people, my parents, my friends, and also after. Uh, two weeks after my emigration, my sister was born, whom I could not see. Um, I miss my native streets and just my compatriots. I miss uh, Belarus and Belarusian people. Um, this is um, here in Ukraine. Um, I understand that um, that that motherland is the motherland. This is the most close that you have. This is the most uh, close thing that you have in your life. So, yes. I hear also a lot of emotions and I, I admire you for living through that. And we all hope everything will come to an end uh, short enough and uh, I would like if there are no questions among who is watching us I want to thank you and to um, to say how Italian people university students uh, support you and we are trying our best to uh, change what's happening and to uh, let people know what's happening because every story is important what you did is important and brave and you need it it's important to give voice to those experiences and so thank you a lot for being so brave uh, and experienced this all uh thank you Irene to for this interview, for the um, possibility to share the share my, share share my story, and I want to thank you, uh, everyone who watching this live now, and um, yes, stay with us, stay with the Belarusian people, and thank you for following the situation in Belarus. Живе Беларусь. Живе Беларусь. Okay, we Bye. can conclude this. Long live Belarus. Yes. <laughs> this is my friends.
and thank you everyone if there are no more questions we're gonna close the live and say goodbye thank you for following us and following us today and in next week we'll, we will do another uh, interview and we will go on until everything will come to an end and Lukashenko will goes down we will go on to hear Belarusian people's voices and thank you again for all of you to fight and stay together and your solidarity yeah. thank you and bye <laughs>